our civil engineering association i am profoundly delighted to take an opportunity to introduce the speaker of the day mr aravind raja mb working as a data engineer latent view analytics chennai he completed his bachelor of engineering in civil engineering in the year 2018 at svc he worked as a apl application development association in essential chennai and did a project in essential health accelerator and worked as a data engineering analyst in essential and did a project in integrated data repos repository and essential health accelerator and he worked as a data engineering senior analyst and essential at essential and did a project in thrive local he has many certifications on aws certified developer association 2020 aws certified solutions architect association 2021 AWS certified data analytics specialty 2022 data engineering nano degree university and essential data and essential greenfield training gft in big data now i would like to invite mr aravind raja to present this talk over to you sir yeah thanks thanks janisha for your introduction uh so good afternoon guys um, so i would like to uh, introduce few uh, topics on uh, data so so data is actually it is not uh, a domain specific it is used across uh, domains uh, to derive insights and to multiple analysis and get outcomes out of it so i would like to uh, get you through like uh, the steps which is followed in the industry as part of uh, data regulations and what are the kind of uh, insights they are arriving at so this is this is not a lecture so i'll be uh, uh, it is purely uh, i think it is kind of an uh, use case based I'll, i'll just show you like few case studies like how um, top companies are leveraging data as part of their uh, uh, improvement and development so that is how the whole uh, <coughs> talk is gone about uh, it is it is again i'm i'm stressing this point because some people might think that data and uh, cleaning and i mean data related stuff is re related to computer science and it is not but it is just it, it is a general uh, uh topic and everyone has to be uh data ready at least uh, in terms of knowledge to at least know what is happening around so that is the main uh, aim for this uh, or main agenda for this talk so yeah i'll take you through these right so yeah these are the topics which we are going to uh, uh discuss today as part of the talk so first i'll uh, get you through the fundamentals of uh, data uh, data driven decision making how it is done what are the steps which is uh, uh take uh, what are the steps which is uh, usually done to uh, arrive at insights and what is the basic difference between data driven decision making and instinct based uh, decision making so i'll go through that the second one is how companies optimize our data so we we provide data to companies on a daily basis how companies are leveraging that data and using for their business development okay and uh, i've also uh, uh, collected few case studies i'll go through them and how data is helped in uh, used in uh, healthcare so that is one topic and how i leverage data during my civil engineering days so i basically did two projects and all uh, all the projects were based on data and last if you want to make a career out of data what are the uh, available options and uh, what is the scope for it so these are the things we'll be discussing today as part of our talk yeah so our first one so let's let's talk about uh, decision making now so previous days when when there was no data to uh, uh, when there was no scope of data or when companies were not collecting data as part of their initial works right so everything whatever they are uh, doing right it will it will be based on an instinct or it will, it will be based on an uh, untrusted source who is saying something like oh okay uh, tomorrow the uh, uh, the production uh, production might have an uh, demand so you have to increase your production right so those kind of uh, sources were uh, impacting your decision making uh, so those kind of things what happens really is you don't know really it is going to happen or not that is the first thing and the uh, impact it will make on your decision so let's say tomorrow there is an obviously there might be an increase in demand for let's let's take one product for let's say tomorrow there is a demand for cotton okay but it might not be as uh, uh, what is it called the demand might not be in uh, that uh, impact or that scale which you have thought of and you might end up in a loss okay 
So that is where the data driven decision making comes into place. So data, what we do is we analyze the data. We see what are the uh, possible uh, scenarios which can happen. We can uh, we we do a prediction analysis. We do our uh, fundamental uh, data uh, quality checks to see how reliable the data is and then make a decision out of it. So that is the difference between the data driven decision making and the uh, instinct instant baked uh, decision making. So if you see here first one, we, we should look for patterns. OK, so so our uh, come uh, today's life, right? right? We, we have a lot of data. So data as in in terms of uh, uh, the uh, everything like you you have multiple uh, open source data sets you have multiple uh, survey studies available right so you you should look for patterns basically so a so similar pattern might have occurred in the past so if you see uh, our uh, covid impact right so if you see there is a pandemic which has occurred a uh, uh, 100 years ago and which followed the same pattern as that of what we did so initially they had a wave one which was yeah it was a great impact but wave two was even more impactful which was again a uh, backtrack if you back if we backtrack and see right those kind of things are a repeating pattern so we we need to look at the pattern first to see if if we can find anything out of it or if it is actually correlating with any of the past uh, occurrence of the particular event so that is the first one next one is analyze it so again here is where i'm saying the correlation part so this, there is a simple correlation. Correlation means when something happens, this will also happen. Or when something happens, this, this will not happen. So that kind of a correlation we need to find. So in, in terms of health, right? So when you go to a doctor, they'll say, when your uh, diabetes uh, or uh, the sugar level shoots up, right? Uh, the BP level also shoots up because of that. So this is a correlation. So whenever there is a uh, rise in an event or decrease in an event, the other event is also affected part of it. So those kind of correlation you need to arrive first to see which are the factors which is affecting our data. So that will be the first one and arrive at the insights based out of that. The next one is whenever you're taking a decision, as I said, right? So let's say tomorrow you are expanding your company or if you want to, uh, in, in terms of civil engineering, you want to construct a um, house at a place and you're putting an investment on top of it, okay? So here, what you'll do is you need to first study the area. Like what are the uh, what are the construction costs which is involved previously? What is the land rate? Uh, so if I build with this uh, investment, what is the return outcomes uh, previously people got out of that place? This kind of studies is very much important before you start a uh, company. So if you just say, okay, tomorrow, I think that place is going to increase without anything. We, we don't have any data backing it. It's, let's say tomorrow, uh, Pakam or some other area, right? It is gonna increase. So I'll build a comp uh, build a place or a build a uh, com uh, let's say kind of a commercial complex or a residential apartment there, and you might end up in a loss because you don't have a data to back up saying that yeah, it will increase in eventual time. It might be due to some uh, noises which uh, is around noises, as in a uh, lot of people might be talking about it today, but tomorrow they might not have. Uh, I mean, tomorrow they will not have. Uh, uh, they will not have interest in that particular topic. It is called noises. So you need to have a data backing up saying, yeah, see, if you see this place, this is having a potential of becoming a big uh, uh, big uh, center point. Like they have IT parks around and you are always prone to have some uh, uh, leads or uh, you'll always have a residential complex and people uh, might come in and... Uh, uh, the places might be full because there are, I mean, because of the rents and the rents is uh, increasing on a day by day. So those kind of insights is what uh, we need to look into before we take a decision on any investment. This is not just for uh, uh, civil engineering or business, anything, even if you are making a personal investment, right? You need to keep track of these things. And last one is visualization. Visualization is, uh, again, if you are not able to make any decisions out of raw data, say, let's say you have an Excel, large Excel of data is available of all the land rates in uh, uh, Chennai. Okay, you might not be able to visualize the impact. Okay, so visualization is basically converting the uh, data into a chart and then visualizing, oh, okay, this is what is the impact. You, you can easily uh, arrive at the impacts based on the visualization. So these are the fundamental things we do 
as part of data discovery, data analysis, and uh, data interpretation. Yeah. So let's uh, see uh, how company optimizes our uh, data. So these are big companies which we use on daily uh, basis. So if you see Ola, Uber, obviously you know that uh, the rates are now, uh, we don't have a fixed rate. So let's compare this scenario where we have fixed rates and uh, we have uh, conventional uh, uh, conventional or uh, data-based uh, business, okay? So if you have a fixed rate, let's say for uh, going for a three kilometer ride, okay? It should supposedly, let, let's take their charging around 15 rupees, okay? So the uh, entire four kilometers or three kilometers has to be around 45 rupees per ride for a three kilometer uh, thing. But now they have, they have broken that conventional thing and they have moved on to the AI based. So this AI based or data based is dependent upon many factors. First one, the number of rides that particular area has. Let's say there is only two rides and there are 10 people. Obviously, there will be a search fire on top of it. Okay. This is because there is a demand for that particular vehicle. This There are two vehicles and 10 uh, uh, customers who are waiting to grab those. So whoever is getting, whoever is willing to pay that high amount, right? Even for the three kilometer, he'll charge around 100 rupees. It will show 100 rupees. Whoever has the urgency or whoever, whoever has the need, right? They are ready to pay that 100 rupees. So the 45 rupees is now converted into 100 rupees. Okay. And this is the increase in the business, if you see. Another thing is, if you see, uh, let's take uh, weather for an instance, okay? If you see during a normal sunny day, you'll have a decreased amount of fire and when it is raining, right? Again, there will be increased amount of fire. This is because there is again a demand which is created for that particular uh, commodity and whoever is willing to grab that uh, or whoever willing to utilize that commodity, they'll be willing to pay that uh, price and obviously there is an increase in the business as well. So th that is how the companies optimize. They they see who are all there, how the data uh, uh, is manipulated. So if if there are like two customers and ten cars available, the fare is going to be much low because there is no demand created. And these these things, right? Whatever we are seeing now, it happens in a real time. It is not like a data is stored somewhere. It is uh, after two days it is processed. Not like that. It is done in a real time. So that is how uh, Ola and uh, I mean Ola, Uber and all. Uh, are uh, utilizing our data so similar way i think swiggy zomato also comes into the same picture where the where, when the demand surges right the price of the delivery also surges okay let's let's take uh, uh, amazon for an instance so this is like a completely uh, a different commodity where uh, it deals with uh, supply chain and management okay so for an uh, i think you might have known about amazon's recommendation system so when you go when you purchase a product it will automatically show a similar product which have been purchased by other people which is like a hook to lure you into that purchase okay so this is done like an uh, uh, what is it called this is on, done on a basis of uh, saying that yeah this per customer has purchased this and you might have uh, have interest in it yeah have a look it is just like that but when people see it, right, they, they get to know, okay, this is much cheaper. And even though it is not needed as part of your daily uh, daily need, right, people tend to buy it on an uh, 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 interest or something like that. So that is how Amazon uh, does uh, things with our data. So he has all the list of uh, data by the uh, based on the products by the customers who have purchased the uh, particular product before. So based on that, he'll do a recommendation on top of it to see if you are able to get it. Okay, I'll, I'll continue the uh, Amazon thing in the case study. Uh, and one more important uh, business which is getting, uh, uh, which is doing a big impact is uh, the Zepto. Uh, I think most of you might have heard of Zepto, but if someone is not uh, familiar with this one, I'll, I'll give you a short introduction. So Zepto is a, uh, similar to that of Swiggy, uh, but it does not do food, but it is kind of a uh, common commodity mar marketing where uh, they uh, bet that they'll deliver the product by 10 minutes. So wherever you are, the product will come to your place by 10 minutes. So that is the uh, 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 USP they are giving us. So if you so how they achieve it? Yeah, again, we'll uh, come to the case study and I'll explain you on that. Cool. So yeah, two, so I have four case studies for you. One is Zipto, 
one is amazon one is starbucks and one is google so how these company uh, analyze their data to arrive at something like which is beneficial and for business development as well as their people engagement okay so yeah this is the first one so uh, in 2008 starbucks had to close lot of uh, uh, their um, uh, rent, uh, retail shops okay they 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 had an issue with the price and the uh, they had an issue with their pricing basically if you see in us uh, the uh, starbucks is a normal brand but when they come to india right it is kind of an uh, it is a kind of an elite brand where people don't prefer that much okay they they analyzed a uh, few things okay they saw that whatever uh, retail shops they had right they were not in a perfect place it, those places were not able to generate demands that is the main thing so the company ceo what they have done is they uh, they gave uh, i mean they collaborated with an analytical company okay to see where are the uh, demand points basically so let's say if you, uh, if a starbucks is inside an uh, mall or let's say it is near an it park or something right so you have a demand for it even though people are not able to go travel to one point and then uh, have a coffee or have an elite place to sit and uh, do their small works right so these are the people who the starbucks want mainly so that is why if you see here they they try to first uh, uh, understand the demand they they uh, they are likely to like uh, uh, position a location first and then put on a new investment new investment as in starting a new branch so this is how starbucks came out of the debt and now it is one of the like uh, leading uh, companies in terms of food food and beverages so they were able to optimize the data they were able to find the right location demographics in terms of where the demand is actually created so in a mall let's say we don't have uh, i mean we don't have to create a demand in mall people used to come they used to let's say in, uh, there is like 1 lakh people coming in and out of uh, mall uh, every day at least 10% or 5% of the people might have might go to the starbucks because of their name quality and other stuff so here the demand needs not need not be created like the people it, the people is already there in that uh, mall you need to just utilize that opportunity so this is about starbucks yeah this is an interesting one so this is similar to that of uh, uh, starbucks again here it is not a retail store but they call it as dark stores okay dark stores is nothing but you can't directly go to that store and buy a product it is zepto exclusive so what this dark store does they are, what they are doing is first they are doing uh, uh, a survey to see where the demand lies so let's take one uh, area let's take for an excellent uh, uh, someone is staying in poonamalli okay so poonamalli there is a lot of demand for a, a product like if you go out go buy a stuff and then come back right so it is taking around 10 to 15 minutes because of the traffic and other stuff so there is a market which is ready to be captured where you are saying that yeah when you order a item it will arrive at 10 minutes okay so that is how they try to analyze the uh, uh, demography they try to analyze the demand and they place a store called dark store okay this dark store is set up only after seeing all those things if you see the third point right it is it is located near a uh, large demand at first place next one they see the uh, delivery routes and Uh, what is the possibility that they can cover this uh, 10 minute guarantee without uh, disrupting their name as well see they they say 10 minutes they have to deliver in 10 minutes if there is traffic congestion and other uh, related stuffs right they will not be able to do it so they had to do a pre uh, analysis to come up with a location saying that yeah if you place it here it is center of all the uh, uh, it is center for all the locations and you can deliver it in a particular time so that is how they came up with this and this startup is doing uh, wonders uh, in terms of business this is because of data they have the data ready they are doing analysis based on data and they in they are getting profits also based on the data the next one is google so as of now we saw uh, the companies doing business uh, outside their territory this is like uh, google has done an uh, uh analysis on their people 
like working people and this is to retain them so every company has their uh, pressure to retain the employees so if if a company is not treating a uh, employee properly right so what happens is that the company uh, the employee is prone to move out of a company and he the company has to find a new one train so these kind of things are exhaustive and cost consuming for a uh, big companies as well okay so what they have done is they did an analysis on people they 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 took the data for uh, like top performers based on the reviews and uh, what is the data retention if a if a person is given so and so perks so those kind of analysis is done and what they have found out is they found that the if the high performers are given that particular perk right or particular compensation in terms of training or any other things right the customers i mean the uh, employee satisfaction increases and the employee tend to stay with them for a much longer time than the expected one so here what they are doing is they are creating an uh, uh, training program to develop their competency i mean competencies and this is how they maintain the uh, 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 employees uh, within them and uh, uh, prevent them from leaving their organization okay it is business is not only outside uh, i mean it is not only customer face but you have to maintain them within the organization as well so this is a good example for that and the last one is amazon uh, as i said in the previous uh, slides right so amazon as you know it is an uh, uh, supply chain uh, and operation kind of an uh, uh, organization where they 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 recommend customers based on the prior patterns and uh, purchases made in a similar similar behavior so that is what so that is how they come up with the analytics they are doing some machine learning but machine learning is an uh, what is it called jargon i'll say but it is like similar people's uh, 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 purchase history is taken and they are saying like okay uh, people with similar history like you have bought this like it will just show you it will show a recommendation on top of it and you are like more likely to buy it what how 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 much percentage are you likely to buy that product so that is how uh, they come up with this and in 2017 mckinsey is an uh, analytical firm uh, for uh, uh, for a big companies so it is a big company so it has said like 35% of the consumers uh, are tied back to the company's recommendation which means that uh, 35% of like out of 100 35 people are using that recommendation to buy an extra product uh, which they did not uh, plan to buy it before so that is how if you see here there is a 35 percent increase in the business obviously which is gonna uh, reciprocate as an uh, in, uh, increase in the income for that company revenue basically okay so these are the four use cases which i wanted to talk and everything has data in it and they are doing a prayer data research uh before doing any uh, investment on top of thing and they are backing the data so data is what is they are relying to make a business they are not relying on any other external factors okay okay this is one interesting topic so out of four years with accenture right i i've mostly uh, been with, been in the healthcare so i'll i'll just say like how data was helpful in the healthcare industry okay the first one is risk prediction okay risk prediction as in so what what can we do are you doctors no this is not doctors i mean we are not trying to become a doctor but it is just a recommendation system for the health industry saying that uh, with the history we have history of data we have so one person uh, so so we ha we have this comorbidity i think most of the people would have known of the word but this is like associated disease so if you have a diabetes you are more likely to have uh, uh, blood pressure and you are more likely to have uh, uh, other uh, related diseases okay this is a chain of diseases which a person can have okay so risk, risk prediction is kind of an uh, uh, program where you predict your risk for a particular disease so diabetes as in so this risk prediction i did for uh, diabetes so diabetes what are the uh, uh, important factors we consider is a patient's lifestyle is very important so if a pa patient is uh, prone to drink or is a chain smoker if he has a history of uh, diabetes if he has any other uh, illness which is uh, prone to diabetes so we, we 
consider these factor in the starting of the slide i said core uh, there is a uh, there is a term called correlation where we find the relation between one and the other so based on this correlation we say that yeah having these qualities a patient might be uh, prone to a disease so it is just an uh, awareness or a uh, indicator saying that yeah this person is a uh, what is it called this person might be prone to this disease and if he takes proper precaution right he might uh, reduce the risk of that particular disease so that is risk prediction here we are backing up with the data saying that if someone comes tomorrow and say hey why why did you say that i am a risk uh, risk to this particular disease we have a data to back up saying that see we have uh, we uh, uh, these many persons have similar complications have you and they have ended up in the particular uh, risk category and they have that particular disease so it is better for you to take the precaution uh, so that you are, you don't arrive at that particular uh, state the second one is illness progression so this is also a similar case where uh, a illness can be estimated like there is one uh, a term called i mean it's a disease called uh, diaptic retinopathy retinopathy is something which will affect your eyes basically so it will it is a progressive disease so it has multiple stages and the last stage is blindness okay so if you are having diaptis and uh, if you have diaptic uh, retinopathy right so if you are in a starting stage so this is an image based data data need not be just an excel sheet and uh, normal words it can be also images so here what we do is we feed the uh, systems with images of eyes who are having uh, diaptic retinopathy and we say hey this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, stage which they are in and uh, with the help of that data we'll say yeah see this from stage 1 to stage 2 people have gone in this much of time with the similar uh, characteristics so this is the possibility that you might uh, end up in a stage 2 so it is better for us to go into a care management kind of a program so that is the illness progression next one is hospital uh, management so hospital management is how they manage the beds basically so let's say for a fever let's say if you are admitted in a hospital for 4 days that is like an extended stay which is uh, like you are blocking a bed which doesn't need an hospital uh, uh, care and it can be done in a uh, home itself in a small setup so if you see here we are blocking a bed for a potential uh, patient who is coming in who since you don't need that care right Th so those kind of things can be uh, uh, managed with the help of data saying that for this illness the hospital management is not required we can administer some medications and you can be uh, uh, you can take a bed rest in home itself so those kind of things can be done in this hospital management the last one is patient survey so patient survey is very much important for any hospital hospitals so if a patient comes in and he doesn't like the service of the doctor it is going to uh, damage the reputation of the particular institution so we take that survey on a regular basis we see what patient lacks what is the uh, patient feedback we are getting and improve on top of it so that we provide that service to them and they they next time they come in right uh, they feel happier than the previous time this is just an uh, uh, customer uh, engagement kind of uh, opportunity so these are this is how data is handled in the healthcare industry okay so yeah this is the uh, place where i played around uh, data in my civil engineering days okay so uh, during our time i'm not sure whether you guys have it now or not we had two things one is the design project one is the final project so this one uh, is the design project which i did as part of uh, our curriculum uh, under uh, silva kumar sir so i'll just explain like how it is done how how we uh, uh, arrived at the insight analyze the data so that you can have a idea like okay this is how things are going around in civil engineering as well okay so this is an uh, uh, recommendation solution for a traffic congestion it is basically uh, analyzing a junction and providing uh, 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 providing insight so that uh, the whoever uh, so we report uh, we gave this report to uh, uh, the deputy commissioner of uh, police who is in charge of traffic in our area okay so what we did is we basically placed cameras in all the uh, junctions we for this is done for a period of 2 hours the camera is continuously placed for 2 hours we took how many vehicles are going uh, across uh, 
uh, across the road. So let's say a person is going from Balaji Nagar to uh, Avaish and Mugam Salai, right? So how many vehicles are going in this direction? Likewise, we, we studied and we gathered data for all the uh, directions with the help of our uh, 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 videos which we captured. We got the accident data to see if there is any accident prone zones which is actually been uh, uh, there in this uh, junction. We, we also considered potential influence. So if there is some traffic around this route, right, they, there should be some influential places, might be in a hospital, might be in school, uh, might be some other institutions uh, uh, whom uh, people visit on a day-to-day -day basis. So those kind of studies we did and we analyzed that, yeah, these are the things we can improve on this road. We, we, we tried to implement a, a traffic uh, signal for this particular junction, but uh it wasn't possible because uh the traffic is huge and uh, the waiting time was also high so it is not an particular uh, uh it is not a right candidate for that particular uh, junction so that is what is data doing so you get to know what to do what not to do with that particular data and then you suggest something to the uh, uh particular organization or an institution so we said that yeah this traffic signal is not going to work and we might need a uh, as, as the time increases, right, for the next five years or next 10 years, the traffic is prone to increase. So you need to make some changes to the uh, roads in order to uh, maintain the traffic flow across this junction. Okay, so this is the first project, uh, design project, which I was part of under uh, Silver Kumar, sir. And the next one is again, uh, as part of uh, the main project, final year project. Uh, this is also under uh, Silver Kumar, sir, where I, I and my team performed a air travel demand forecast okay so this is basically like an uh, uh, to see or forecast a demand for an air travel between uh, i mean for the year of 2031 okay so why 2031 is that time you should be ready with the infrastructure to handle such an uh, uh, increase in the uh, passenger flow so that is that is what we have done so what we did is we uh, correlated population with the uh, uh, air travel uh, demand between the two uh, city pairs, city pairs as in let's say Chennai to Hyderabad. So what we did is we we uh, we got this information from uh, uh, the airport authority of India. So we got the number of passengers traveling across uh, any two cities for one year. We analyzed the data. We associated that particular data to an uh, population. We found that as the population increases, uh, the uh, the what is it called? The uh, flying frequencies or the number of passengers flying between those cities also increases. Okay, so these kind of analysis can be done to arrive saying that yeah, this is gonna be the so today it is like this. Okay, in ten years down the line. Uh, this is the estimation we are uh, we are uh, uh, giving up so that you can be ready with uh, infrastructure. So if in case airport is daily, uh, let's say 10 lakh people or 20 lakh people can uh, access an airport, tomorrow if it is going to be 150 lakhs or uh, 1 crore, right? The infrastructure has to be ready to, uh, to meet the demands or uh, uh, to say like you, you need to be ready. So that is why if you see now, right? Uh, there are uh, multiple airports which is being analyzed. Like if you see, now we have a Minambakam airport and the government of uh, Tamil Nadu has said that we are going to have one more airport near Kanjiburam. So this is to meet the demand. So our uh, Chennai Minambakam airport has, has reached its limit. So it ca to cater the future demand, right? So we need to accommodate infrastructures so that people can uh, uh, have it uh, ready when the when the in a 10 year mark so that is how we need to uh, we need to be ready with the analysis and stuff okay so the last slide uh, so this slide is like so if you want to make a career out of data okay so these are like the popular uh, uh, designations which you can opt if in case you are uh, uh, fond of data or if you are passionate about data okay data engineering so this is what i do so basically, I optimize and build systems so that the data is catered uh, uh, to the uh, uh, decision-making people. Okay, so we we get the raw data. Raw data will be in uh, clumsy format. So we need to process the data 
whatever the peop, uh, whatever the business people needs right those data has to be extracted out of the raw data and we just um, give it to the business people for their analysis and stuff so there is one more category called data analysis where they do the immediate analysis so let's say something is not working let's say uh, suddenly there is a drop in uh, uh, income for a particular uh, sector of people okay so so what they do is they see what is what are the things which is going wrong how it is going wrong and they they try to get a supporting feature from the data where uh, they say that yeah this is the reason which is uh, going wrong and we need to uh, work on it so the third one is data scientist where they try to solve a future problem which is going to arise use of data and they try to predict it they try to um, analyze it using machine learning uh, these are the fancy terms which they use in the industry machine learning deep learning image analytics and so on and so forth so these are the things uh, these are the major things uh, uh, where you can make a data out of a uh, career out of a data and uh, yeah if you are interested uh, yeah please uh, uh, let me know if you have any doubts i'll uh, uh, I'm, i'm i'll be happy to help you out in person also yeah so yeah any questions hello participants if you have any questions you can ask okay so what i'll do is uh, if anyone has any doubts right i'll just drop in my details uh, in this chat itself so that whenever you i mean you might not have any issues now and in future if you have any uh, uh, any plan or any doubts regarding data related uh, things right you can just reach out to me so my i'll just drop in my phone number and my linkedin uh, uh, profile in this particular chat Thank, Thank you, you sir. Guys.